There's so many times I forget to hit that play button, but I would like to um, talk about some things that that you know i'm always talking about what the fuck bothering me god damn it and i'm the only one who want to hear what the fuck i gotta say so right now i'm gonna talk to myself and then you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna start going back listening because when i get it out of my head sometimes i don't go back and listen and this just is a form of me expressing myself verbally and then sometimes i like to share it and sometimes i don't because i'm like you well you know what people really don't care how I feel and and I get that and I understand that and so I have found that social media and things has given me an opportunity to, to even if one person look and one person communicate with me then hey I got a conversation out of somebody about something that's going on in my head and sometimes it can be helpful but it's hard to express yourself deeply because it's hard for me. I'm going to speak for myself and how I feel. Because I can't speak on the behalf of others, just myself. And that's the thing. I need to break that cycle of thinking that I'm responsible for everybody else other than myself and my family. Or even how people feel, how people perceive, and what go on in their lives. We all have to make it for ourselves. It's my job. It's my job to discipline me. I'm done raising my children and I'm helping raise my grandchildren and I babysit them. And if I have to babysit someone else's child, then I'm going to be that mother at that moment for that child when they are in my care. I'm going to treat them just like I do my own children, minus the spanking them. And if they need a spanking, oh, they going to get it. And I'm going to tell their mama that I had to pop them because they did thus and so. And I'm going to keep it real. How they take it is left up to them. But if I think they need a spanking at that moment, I'm going to give them one. And it might make me feel bad that I have to do that. I don't like laying hands on. I like to be able to talk to them and they listen. When my grandmother told me to do something, I listened to her. When my grandfather told me to do something, I listened to them. My mom, my dad, there wasn't that much that my dad really said to do. My dad really didn't talk that much. He just didn't. My grandparents didn't really talk that much. But when they asked me to do something, I would go do it for them. I loved them. They were like great figures in my life. And when I look up, I see my grandmother and my grandfather there, and I don't see any higher than them in my life. I didn't, I didn't get a chance to meet great grandparents. I didn't get a chance to have great grandparents in my life. And so that's as high as I can look in my life as my grandparents. And I adore both of them. I really do. And then my parents. I, I look up and I had both of my parents and my, my, my mom said that this man was my natural dad. Someone who wasn't the dad who was on my birth certificate. But my dad, when people would challenge my dad and say, look, that's not your daughter there. You know that ain't your daughter. And, and, and all of the other things that go along with the color of a person's skin, they would say it. And my dad, when he got tired of it, he would say, well, my name on her birth certificate and that make her mine. And my dad always treated me with nothing but respect nothing but respect now my mom was a completely different story because sometimes the things that came out of my mama's mouth it it just made me feel like my mom hated me but when i look at my mom's actions she loved me her words were demeaning sometimes and she she would she was sometimes made me feel like she hated me she was she was brutal with her words she was brutal with her words and I couldn't wait to get grown to move out and I wanted to move as far away from her as I could but I promise you it wasn't two weeks and I was missing her <laughs> it was not two weeks and I just wanted to see my mama I just wanted to go see
<laughs> I got used to it though, and I did not want to move back to my hometown. I just didn't want to move back there. It was, um, there was not a lot to do in Monticello, and to find work was not easy there. Close the door. Close the door. See, these little children, they like to try you. I would like to try and do something on child security. Like making sure they don't escape. Children will escape. And you might think that someone kidnapped them. And they might have even locked the door behind them because they see how we do it oh so well. They know how to unlock that door, open that door, and go out that door. Screen door, chains. They know how to get them a chair, broom, and all of that stuff. So I try real hard to secure a house real good. They might open a door and be out that door running down the road and you see them. I done been through that. They know how they know how to open a window and climb out that motherfucker and get it gone. It's we have to secure our house. I didn't mind if mine slept on the floor in the bedroom with me. I didn't care. It's they need to be closer to us. They need to be closer to us. We push them away so fast. They walk up in the hospital room when your baby is just born and try to take it out of your arms and take it in the other room and stuff. And tell you that your baby can't sleep in the bed with you. Mine slept in the bed with me and my own. They had slept in my belly all that time. They needed to be close to me. And I needed to be able to feel them. You done had that baby in your belly for all those months. You ain't even gonna turn over on them because you still feel them in that belly. It's the, and if you keep them close to that belly and they little head up John the right there, and then our babies don't even eat from our body. Every other species feeds baby. They they got boobies. They think, but we done detached our babies from us. Go over there and sit down like I said, do. I am still, I still hear you. Didn't I ask you to come over here and sit down? Didn't, and didn't I tell you to stay out of that chair? Come over here and sit. Over there. My little grandchildren were so hard-headed. When we was at my grandparents' house, we, we would get through that high running, but mother won't sit in there looking at us. These little children don't care if you asking them because if mother was to ask us to do something, we was finna move out quick. We were just gonna go. That's just how it was. Because if she had to spank you, your mama was gonna spank you too. You ain't finna show out not over here. You ain't finna do it. Not at mother house. Not at mother house. No, 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 no. You finna go somewhere. You finna sit down. Now, things did get broke. I ain't gonna say it did. But she was round yarn in the kitchen somewhere cooking. And we was all in the back room playing and stuff. And we got caught one time. <laughs> and we was in there just a bouncing jump, jump, diddy, jump, diddy, jump. On Miller's bed. And she spanked her. She had a switch in her hand. She failed you real quick. She was quick. She was in the 60, but a little hand would get you real quick. She was popping them real fast, and I got on. I ran past her, went around in the kitchen, and hid underneath the kitchen table. And she didn't even, she just reached under there with the switch. And then it was a little small switch, and I really didn't even feel it bad. And, 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 and I just passed out crying. I must have cried for 20 minutes, 30 minutes. I don't know. It might have been an hour. And, 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 and I was crying so hard and I was feeling so sad. But I was more disappointed in myself for upsetting her. My grandmother had never popped me. And she had never spanked me. And I had realized then that I had never really given her a reason. And when I did that, it hurt me so bad to my heart because my grandmother did not do anything that hurt me. And I didn't want to do nothing to hurt her. So when she spanked me, I was just so disappointed in myself. And so she got me in, in her arms and she just rocked me and rocked me and rocked me. And when I woke up, I was laying in the bed. <laughs> 
They said all kind of stuff standing over there in that dining room. And mother was saying, oh, y'all going somewhere and sit down. I ain't going to say what they said. But they were standing over there. Oh, yeah, they were calling me all kind of names. And then they were saying, oh, mother like her better than she do us and blase this and blase that. When I woke up, I was in her bed. She was mine and I was hers. <laughs> So I'm glad to know what they said was that she loved me more. <laughs> they used to tell me that all the time and I didn't know it. That she loved me more. <laughs> Feel good to be loved by somebody. Thank y'all for letting me know that how much she loved me and she loved me more. She loved you more. She liked you more. She did right some shit. Thank you. I did not know that. Thank you, mother, for loving me. <laughs> My grandmama loved me more than she did the rest of them. They said it. I didn't say it. <laughs> Ain't that the shit? She's, they said it. I didn't never say that. I didn't never think that. Because I'm. as I've gotten older, it's just now that I'm beginning to understand what love is is and it's not sexual thing it's no sexual aspect whatsoever with love Stop. come on go stand in time out why are you flapping him on his head come on he just sitting there minding his own business and you should have been minding your own business too now go on stand right there there you go there you go good job thank you Dealer chilling around knee parts. You know, I tell them, I say, I fight children too now. I want you to remember that. Now you hit me, I'm going to hit you back now. And I'm going to always try to remember in my mind, let one on, care if they hit, they hit, pop, I'm going to hit them right back. Don't hit me. You hit me, I'm going to hit you back. I hit, I fight little children too. I ain't never had that problem though. I haven't. Even when I babysat, the little children were so sweet. I used to love them so much when they a certain age. That little age group right there. And then you got them when they get a little bit older and their mouthpiece change on them a little bit. My mama used to say, you're smelling yourself. You're smelling yourself. I don't know what I was smelling. <laughs> I think back and I still ain't smell nothing yet. I don't know what I was smelling, though. <laughs> but listen, on a most serious note, why we the only species that, well, we not, yeah, we the only one that kill each other and not going to eat. You know, even if the lion's fighting and having a fight and stuff like that, even if they kill, you know, they don't eat each other either, but then what they fighting for? Why we want to be like the lions? Why can we so vicious? I just, I don't understand it. And then I realized what it is. We were born in chaos. We were born in calamity. We were born in a time where people were, um, weren't allowed to speak their own language. They were stripped. They were being stripped of so many things. And where we are today in 2022, it's a lot of people who realize that that's wrong. And they, they have a lot of regrets. How can we teach our children not to have them same regrets? Hmm? We have to send our children to school with people who might not even want to teach them because of the color of their skin. Be they anywhere from the darkest of the night to the lightest of the day. That somebody might not want to deal with them and want to just point them out because of that thing and that thing alone. When as Americans we can get past that. You can go to Cuba and you can see the darkest and the lightest and they're all Cubans. Same thing in Mexico. Same thing in Pakistan and different countries around the world. But it's only certain countries that don't want to recognize a person as a natural citizen. I was born in America. If you want to label it as anything America. I'm indigent to this land because this is where I was born. This is where my roots were planted. In the corner, you got 
You got two more minutes and you can get out. Turn around. And and, and I, I resent people telling me I need to go back to Africa. I've never been. Now, Elion Musk, e Elion, what's his name? Elion Musk, he's an African-American. He's a white man. He's a white man. And he's African-American. Every time I picture Africa, I think I picture Negroes. Negras. Niggas. Black. Well, whites are, you know, niggas too. So why is that so hard to see? That he's African-American. There's whites who migrated to Africa from other regions. And they too became, they were born to that continent or that soil that has that line, that region that we see on the map. You know how they got that little black land, line all around the continents, how they done got it demographically drawn out all down to the seismographics of a map on a piece of paper. And they can tell you the shape of the shit. And if you done seen Italy, from the, they say it's the solar station or whatever it is, the Google satellite shit, and that Italy got that little old tip down there. You're like, ah, right, damn, they had the map long before they had the satellite. Where all of this technology come from? It ain't just happened. That shit been out there. It's just technology. We, we are finally catching up to the technology that has been there. We catching up to the things that have been hidden from us for, for ain't no telling how many centuries. Ain't no telling how we used to communicate. It might have not just started. Help centers everywhere that you go there should always be help. At every border, that should be help. There should be a person who can take names. We had a technology to, to translate right there. We got technology to translate for them people to tell you what's going on and what's happening. But we want to be offenses with barbed wire on them instead of trying to help them and just let them migrate with the rest of the animals, please.